It's almost like an edition of Big Clive Live. If you don't know Big Clive Live, go check them out. Link in the description below. This is not my forte. However, it is my sister's van, a 2014 Dodge a Grand Carry van. It's got the big 3.6 in it. Called me up the other day and said her wipers quit. I was thinking wiper motor, but then I forgot. Dodge has a tip them, and they fail all the time. Diagnosed it. Pretty simple diagnosis. The system works off of a dual relay. They have a wiper on off relay and then they have a high low speed relay and the rest of the logic for intermittent wipers and stuff is done through simply that through logic. I diagnosed it as having a bad wiper on off relay. It was stuck in one position. It's a dual throw relay. It is stuck. It will not come on. So it is constantly on ground. It never turns on power to send through the high low relay, which it was functioning. The high low would switch from high to low and the on off would always stay on ground. So it was a simple diagnosis in that regards. However, the diagnosis is it needs a new tip -um. The tip -um is about six bills. The relay is about four bills. And by that, I mean like $4 instead of 600 for the entire tip -um. Being that it's my sister, I told her, I said, I'm willing to take that thing apart. Worst case scenario, I destroy it and you, well, you gotta buy tip them anyways. And here we are. I did not show the process of taking it apart because I don't have any step-by-step -step instructions how to take it apart, but I figured it out in the end. A little bit of frustration, some picks. So the screwdrivers, of course, I'll show you putting it back together, assuming this video airs and we can get it back together. Now I got this far. I've got the circuit board out of it. It appears that the back piece here, this is all epoxy together with black resin type epoxy. This was the AVE channel. I'd be specific as far as what type of epoxy, just based on texture and color. However, I'm not. These are three of the four relays on the circuit board. I do not know what this fourth one, or I shouldn't say, I don't know what any of them are. I know their dual position in the sense there are 10 pins on them so that is like two five pin relays into one relay and they're wicked tiny they're made in the philippines i'm really hoping that it's one of these three now i didn't know how many relays were on this board i knew what kind of relays were on it so i bought some in a bag from amazon and i only got three what we need to do is <laughs> Put out a prayer request on the Facebook is going to be the first thing. I wish I could separate this back piece. I don't know if there's some electronics tip, you know, to break the epoxy. Probably best just not meddle with it. Um, I think the best thing is to find a diagram for the relay, which I think we can do. Test each one of these relays. Hopefully it's one of those. Find out which one is not switching and then replace it. Now, hopefully by tearing this apart, it didn't, you know, wiggle its jiggly bits enough to make it start working. That's where I'm at and I'm like, let's just turn on the camera, see what happens. Diagram is in hand. I probably should stop and go get something to eat. I'm shaking a little bit, probably because I'm nervous. I don't want to mess this up. So here is the diagram for the relay. So if you look at that, and that, mind you, is just one of the you know, those little, these little guys right here. That's ridiculous why they can't just put it in the box. So here's this little relay. I'm going to try to solder this on my sausage fingers. And here's what I was talking about. It is nothing more than just a two relays all into one kind of little combo deal. All right. I believe the best I can tell by their pin layout that I have, if I lay the wiring diagram like so, let me put this relay away. I need a couple extra sets of hands to do this is the problem if we're going to check the relay. Um, I'm going to leave this sitting like this. I've got the board like this, making sure we're not going to damage anything. There's probably some electronics geek like <laughs> flipping out right now. <laughs> I've got the power probe because, you know, there's an automotive channel. What I figure we can do is I can use the power probe will identify the low current side of the relay, the turn on side, the control side. Technically, 
we could probably measure our other ones. They should have some resistive value of, you know, 100 ohms, 200 ohms, something like that. We can make sure we have the right pins here and then we'll cross our fingers. We'll turn on the power probe and we'll touch the tip in the ground on there and see if we hear these relays click. That's the best, that's the best I can do. Um, I did buy on the Amazon. Wait till you guys see these things. <laughs> they had great reviews. Um, so I'm going to put on my magnifying glasses so I can see what in the thunder I'm doing. They come with various lenses. We'll see how these things work out. I'm going to take some batteries. So I'll get these things on. I'll get you guys zoomed in so you can see. Hopefully I can see. I'm going to try to keep my fingers out of the way. Looks like I need some. Oh, I got triple A's right here. I got two of them. I'll have to go get some more. I'm going to try to get it so you guys can see, so we can all see. We can all have fun. If it goes up in smoke, well, so be it. If it works, fantastic. Hopefully, for your sake, it works so somebody else can do this. And what I figure we'll do is I did not show the disassembly apart. However, sometimes reverse engineering is the best. If you can see it taken apart, it's easier to figure out how it goes together. All right, let's see something here. So here we are. I've moved you guys to where you need to be. We're going to use the power probe. I think I already mentioned that. And we're going to take and check these relays to see if we can figure out who's who, which one's bad. I'm hoping to find a bad one. Now, one thing I observed is if we look, they are not put on the board exactly the same. You got two of them facing this direction, one facing that direction. Um, I don't mean to keep saying ohm. So I took a little magic Sharpie under here. It's a magical Sharpie. And I put a little black dot, which I've just enhanced, on the two that are the same direction. Now I've got my diagram right here. We're gonna figure these little guys out, who's who. I've got my meter set up here on resistance continuity. It should squawk at us if we have continuity. Now my relay that we're trying to find that is bad is stuck in the shut position or you know in one of the positions it's stuck and won't switch. So I believe that I have my diagram going correctly and we should have if everything is right and the moon's aligned here that should be continuous across there and it is and then it should be continuous across here. And it is. Now let me turn my diagram upside down because I'm not that right of a fella and if we go to the next relay which is in the different position let me make a little mark on my paper here so I know which side is up put a black dot at the top so that's for the black dot relay testing so with that being said we should have continuity from here this is pin 4 to this pin I'm imagining and we do and then from 6 to 10 and we do, and then this one should be the same. This should be 6 to 10. And we got it. And then from 4 to 1. Oops, not there to there, but from here to here. Okay, so that tells me that we're, at least our diagram appears to be correct. Now what we can do is we can come on the control side, which should be these ones, this should have some sort of resistance through the coil. And it does 150 ohms. This is for the control side, that's 150 ohms. This should be a control side here also. Because it doesn't matter, it's upside down. 150. 150. 150. Oops. So we've got 150 ohms in all 246 of the controls. I did not check this one, you ding dong. I forgot. We're hoping it's not that one. That is not a control side. <laughs> this should be, though. Why am I adamant that it's not going to be this one? This should be a control, right? 149.2. One fifty. Okay, 
and then we should have some continuity across one way or another here. Let's just try this direction first, nothing. one. Nope. Doing that one wrong, fella. Think, think, think. Alright, let me flip my diagram here. Now let's just check this way. The pin layout is not very friendly. Was it this too? If I know which, if I can find one, I can find the other. Nope, it's not. It's this one. Okay, so that means I gotta turn my diagram. So then that means it's going to be this one, and this one should be continuous. Okay, and they are. Okay, where was I? <laughs> I keep forgetting we got the lone soldier up here. And that one I'm going to put a black dot on too, up in this direction, because that's the way my diagram faces. Okay, hope everybody's still with me. Probably the most boring SMA video ever. Let's take... Let's go on the control side. Let's stick a little bit of juice to this fella and see if these things click. Clicking does not mean a relay works. However, I know my relay that's bad probably doesn't click because of the way it's broke. Oh gosh, I hope this doesn't fry anything. Watch out for the smoke, fellas. Whoa, shit. Oops, didn't mean to say that, but I saw sparks. That relay clicks, the side of it. Is that, is that the right pins? Am I on the right pins? You're not on the right pins. Oops, that's too many sparks. Yeah, it was on the right pins. That relay clicks. <laughs> ah, you don't want me fixing your car. Uh, let's see, seven, eight, so it should be these two. Actually, let's start with the other one. We're just going across, we're just hearing, we're just experimenting here, folks. So it should be these ones down here. It should be the control side. Let's put some juice to that. Hey, that one clicks. And what do we got up here, this side? That one clicks. Now this one, let me flip, that shouldn't matter, but let me just flip it just in case. When in doubt, flip it around. There we go. Oops, oops. Something just is going to smoke. I see way too many sparks here. Ooh, listen. That one doesn't go clicky. Let's try this right here. Ooh, that one's no, no clicky clicky. Let's try this one. That one's got clicky clicky. Ah, distinct difference here, fellas. No clicky. We're calling that one the wiper relay. Technically, what I should do is we should have another person here with a meter. Okay. Basically, if you don't know how relays work, <laughs> you've probably checked out of the video at this point. What I'm doing to make it click uh, prior to making sparks is we just come across the control side, and all that's going to do is we, let's say, you know, let's say here we got our power source coming in, you know, and then it goes through the just vision that's going through, comes out number four, and goes to, you know, whatever. When we turn this relay on, we energize this coil, and then the switch goes to click over to number five. And then the power comes in here and then goes up through number five and then out to wherever the power needs to go. So when we're applying power in a ground to this control side, we're just, the clicking you're hearing is this switch. You know, if you think of it like your hall light, hallway switch or something, it's just going tick, 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 and it's spring loaded. So it's going to favor or normally closed. And this position here and this position here is normally open. When you turn it on, then it turns on that terminal. And same way, you know, for this side of the relay. 
being that we hear no physical movement in this one right here, let's put an X on this one. We know that relay is bad. What we should be doing, I guess that's where I was going with the original story here, is we should have a meter hooked here to here from one to four, checking for continuity. We should turn it on and then this meter theoretically should go open circuit and then uh, I guess unless it, yeah, no, it wouldn't have a clamping down. Uh, anyhow, apply power here and then make sure that the the contacts make contact from you know one to five, and then we take the power away and it should go back from one to four. That's how we technically should be testing this. Depending on how this goes, I've never desoldered anything like this before. If this is successful, I may or may not just change the other relays. But at this point, we know this one doesn't work. Here's the new one. My hands are shaky. I bought some other stuff on Amazon that it said that I needed. And it was this thing here, some kind of solder sucker. And some V soldering wick. And I guess we probably could look this up on YouTube, but I'm thinking that because this is just like copper strand, what we do is we're gonna stick it on here. This is probably way easier said than done. I should watch more Big Clive Live. I'm sure he shows this process. So we're going to take our little soldering gun and we're going to whoop, heat it up and it's going to go whoop right up in this wire. And then we chop it off. <laughs> this is not going to work. So let's uh, let's do this. What do we got to lose? I ain't got, I ain't got a nickel in it. Well, I do. About 15 bucks. But we're good. So we'll trim this down. And I'm assuming that we, I don't know if we stick it near it and heat up the whole shebang. Uh, let's get the soldering iron going. I got you guys propped up where everybody can see. I got my super sweet glasses on, 2.5x. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking that's how we do it. <sighs> I'm just nervous about soldering it back together. I don't know. I mean, things are pretty snug down here. So I'm waiting for the soldering iron to heat up. I don't know if we got to get the. I think this is just flux. It looks like the. Uh, that's just flux. Trust me, I would never do this on a customer's car, just FYI. If you think I'm being haphazard or something like that. I'm definitely not cut out for this. <sighs> Can you see? Yeah, we're right down there, I think. We're going to be right in this area. Okay, let's just see what happens if we, uh, oops. Seems like it's pretty toasty. What happens if I just get near one of these pins? What's it do? Let's just experiment here for a little bit. I don't know if you can melt these circuit boards or, to be honest with you. My torch doesn't seem to be that hot. Oh, I think it solidified it. I'm going to give her a few more minutes to heat up here. Let me just touch on this solder. Oh, it seems pretty toasty. Um, let's just try that again. Oops, I ended up putting some solder on it. Ding dong. Come on. All right, she's good and toasty now. Let's just try. I've kind of farted around here for a minute. I don't know. If you just heat on the braided portion here to get the solder to flow into it. Oh, I got it to stick, that's good. No. Maybe I need some flux on the uh, yeah, I need some flux on it. I think I understand the theory of it, but... Just try chopping that off. Let's see here, let's try a different... Uh... They don't look like they have much solder on them to begin with. It's probably all the wrong size stuff too. I don't, <clears throat> I don't know enough about electronics to know what to buy. Okay. 
Okay, that's just for poop and laughter. See if that pin is loose. It's not. Dang. Um, I wonder. Let's go to plant B. There's always a plant B. You guys know that. Well, if we get it loose, we can't just push the pin down, right? I just want to see if the solder... Yeah, the solder's flowing. I just need to get it to flow into my unit. Into this little guy. That's the trick. So maybe go like this. Maybe I should watch a YouTube video. Maybe that would be the best bet. Maybe something like that. No. Maybe I've got the wrong tip on my soldering iron. Stuff gets a little hot in the hand. Ah, oh, folks. I feel like I'm letting everybody down. Dripping solder on the circuit board. <laughs> I suck at this. It's just a stupid relay. Maybe the end of it needs to be frayed out a little bit. Let's try that. It is braided cable. Maybe that's why it's braided. Let me fluff it up a little bit here. Alright, now we're fluffy. I know this is painful to watch, but... I'm having good luck with it. I'm gonna fart around here. So I think the solder sucker thing might actually work. Let's just, it didn't come with no dang instructions, but I think I just sucked up some solder with it. So let's try to get this pin here. And get the solder to flow, and then I think I just come beside it and push the button. Yeah, I put a bunch of solder up in the hole. Oh, let's keep trying that. Maybe this is, maybe this is the ticket right here. Let's get the solder flowing. Get my finger on the button. Ha! I'll be damned. Look at that. I think it sucked the whole freaking pin out of that one. Or the relay melted. That thing's slicker than penguin snot. That is awesome. Why is I messing with that braided stuff? Let's get this one flowing again. I don't know if it did anything on that one, but we'll try these little guys. Try. Oh, she's flowing. Hit the button. Boom! <laughs> it's like a little baby booger sucker. This thing is awesome. I shouldn't say that. I, this whole project may be destroyed at this point, but. Boom! What? Got a hole. Maybe a little hole. Let's try this one. Bam, I think. I don't know if it really just falls off once we get it. Push it down and knocks the old piece out too. Oh yeah, there's a lot of solder in this thing, so we must be doing something. This is so freaking awesome. What? Get near my solder sucker. The old solder sucker. That should be a name for a bar too. I don't know if you're supposed to go beside it or 
if like you get it hot then you stick it right on it and give it the old suck job or not I don't know I think my pins are disappearing though let's try that let's get her a little bit on the warm side and then I'm gonna come right in on it I think it solidifies too quickly uh, yeah and I can't get in there let's, let's try this one again Oh, there it goes. It's making a big old hole. I think that's what it's supposed to do. I could be way wrong on that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you guys see what's happening? Are you in frame? Oh, you're not. Let me move you. Ouch. That's hot. Well, it doesn't seem to be very loose. However, I think we're making progress. I want to see if I can just heat them up and move the pins away from the edge of the board here. Yep, like that right there. Unfortunately, it doesn't take much solder, I think, to make it stay. I'm going to continue on with this process, trying to get the solder that's, you know, deep inside. I think this is my best bet. I could be wrong. Now I know there's other options, as you guys are probably going to tell me in the comment box. However, I don't, this is not my forte by any means. And that should be clearly obvious at this point. Yeah, the, pin's, the pin is loose, man. I think if we get it loose and I can just heat them up and try to pull it down a little bit. Gosh, I wish I knew how to do this. But I'm not going to give up, rest assured. Let me keep meddling here. We have sweet victory. I got it out. A little bit of unconventional methods. It did uh, involve a little bit of squeezing with the pliers to kind of work it a little bit. Um, the holes, let me just see. I don't know if, yeah, see, they're big. I'm wondering if I can booger suck out the rest of the holes. Now, the little booger sucker thing did work pretty well, and that got it like 80% of the way. And I'm not real sure how it's supposed to be used. I wonder if we come in from underneath and then booger suck it on the back side. So I'm gonna do that and uh, get them holes cleaned out. We'll get our new relay put in. All right, so where were we? I guess we were saying that we have the relay out. I weren't happy about that. And no, I am not gonna replace the other ones. I knew in the beginning of the video, I was all kind of gung-ho, like, yeah, let's do that. But now I'm like, no, let's just see if this stupid thing still works. Now this one, this relay, and this relay went in the same direction, so we're going to put this in, in the same direction. Assuming that it can be done. Oh, look at that. It did, it went in. I'm pretty much an electronics rebuilder. <laughs> I'm not gonna count my chickens before they hatch here. I do wanna stick, I'm gonna stick a pick underneath that relay to keep it up in. Cause I'm sure it's probably gonna solder. I shouldn't say sure. I hope it solders in better than it came out. Now I don't know how much heat a circuit board can withstand before something, you know, drastically goes wrong with it. I've put a lot of heat on this, you know, messing and fiddling, trying to get these out. Well, the only solder I have sitting around the shop is, solder that I have sitting around the shop is this stuff here. Okay, so we get the pin toasty. I've put some scratches on the circuit board. All right. I should probably watch some YouTube videos on how to desolder pins. Uh, can, are you guys in the viewfinder here? Yeah, I think so. So heat that pin up. 
I have fixed like instrument clusters where I take them apart and it's obviously broke around the pin and that just involves you know heating it up kind of letting the solder reflow where it needs to go that seems relatively simple and it has worked for me I probably should have just spent the 600 bucks unless it works I'll look like a friggin hero car burns down in the driveway well you don't know me I'll likely just get a plate of cookies for doing this anyways that one I wasn't wasn't really happy with I don't like how that there it goes I saw it suck down in that time all right <laughs> well that was easy I don't know about this stuff. I'm clearly not using it correctly. However, I've got three meters of it now um, at 2.5 millimeter width. I don't know what I'll ever use it for, but I have it. Let's go back. Oops, I got my power probe shut in my drawer. All right, now let's see after all that circus, does this relay go clicky clicky? Uh, let's see, technically. Uh, this one and this one should have continuity. Oops, let me uh, get some beeping back on here. Yep, and then this one and this one should have continuity. This should have 150 ohms on it, which I don't have in the right setting. Okay, let's see if it clicks. Okay. That relay clicks. Let's see if this one clicks. Uh, make sure I'm on the right unit here. Yeah, I am. Hey, she clicks again. That's all we wanted was a happy clicky sound. Again, because the other three or four that are on there, the other three, because they click doesn't mean that they work. At this point, I'm going to assume that they do. I'm not going to go through the grilling process of using two meters and try to hold stuff. I've already probably caused enough damage on the circuit board simply for a couple reasons first one being that I don't know what the heck I'm doing when it comes to this stuff this is way out of my wheelhouse however I'm never afraid to try something that's the only way you'll get better at it the only man who never made a mistake is the man who didn't do anything it looks good on this side that's all I know now to get this thing apart of course, we're going to put it back together in the opposite order in which we took it apart. These two halves come apart. Now there's a latch here and a latch here. I had a heck of a time getting these apart to the point I just had to kind of whittle down the latch where they go in here. If you're taking one apart, you'll see what I'm talking about. It was super frustrating. And I just kept messing and messing and messing until it finally gave in. They come up here and they latch right there and one right there and then the circuit board actually clicks down here let me make sure that is up in all the way that one is this one is not so I'm gonna get this side up in okay there we go all right so both of those sides are in and I'll show you here once I get it snapped together there's a few little snap tabs Trust me, it goes together a heck of a lot easier and it comes apart. So there's a little latch like here, 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 here. Was one there, but I broke it. Or right there. Somewhere there was one I broke it. But the troublesome ones were these ones up in the corner. Because you can't, you know, it looks like just a latch. You could just push it in and away you go. But there's actually a piece behind it that stops it from being pushed in. So I couldn't figure out. I tried pushing in, pushing back. I, I fiddled with this thing to the point I think I just wore its you know, latch off and it finally came out or submitted one or the other. So there's that. And then now we've got to stack the other, they're not circuit boards, they're just, you know, traces here. And they've got the pins that go into the connectors. Now these are numbered, this is number four. And uh, I believe, I want to make sure I have it going the right way here. 
they're only going to go one way and that's the right way. So they just sit on there and then the corresponding. Now these didn't come off very difficult, overly difficult anyways. I would say don't force it. Of course I'm trying to do this up where you guys can see it. I think it probably has to go on somewhat level. Yep, there we go. So there's number four. And then number three went on. Of course it's notched out where the battery positive goes. I really hope this works. That's number three. And then we've got number two. If all else fails, just take lots of pictures with your cell phone. Everybody's got one of those things nowadays. A lot of these ends are going to be fuse holders. There's the little slots where the fuses go. There we go. Let's get that all kind of lined up on there. Looks good. All right, and the last piece of the puzzle is not labeled. We'll call it numero uno for our overseas viewers. Oh, it is labeled. It says number one on that. I didn't see that first go around. This one did come off semi-difficult. I had to fill it with this one a bit to get it off at, to the point I was doubting if I was doing it correctly. Of course, I always doubt that. Of course, I'm trying to like hold it out here in the open where everybody can see. Like AVE and Big Clive Live, they do everything on their bench, and I think it makes recording a tad easier. Okay, I see some pins that aren't really wanting to cooperate. Try to tweak it. Ah! You friggin' ding dong, let's see, come on. I meant to set this down so I can mess with it. So I just had to set it on the bench so I could push it as these forked pieces, like I said, those are where our fuses are going to go, right? Yeah, yeah, those are going to be fuse holders, you know what I mean? So like your fuse, when it's in the fuse box, it's going to go, you know, into these slots, you know, like so. That's what puts the little beauty marks on your fuses. They just go in the little slots. As they come up through, they got to kind of compress a little bit, then they, you know, they pop back open. All right, so just make sure these are all pushed down. And then now we've got all of our pins back in this side. Just multi layers of stuff. And then there was these things. These are little adapters. I think these are going to be for our mega fuses. And they only go one way. So I think I did take a picture of them though. So we're going to have to get out the old Google and have a look at that. There's that one there. I got one left. And it, we're going to assume, goes here. Let's pull up. Have a look, see here. At, uh, see if I can find a picture. Right, here we go. I took me a picture, see if it matches. One, two, barbecue. They all look the same. Beautiful. Yo. Know, We've got to put this piece back on. Now this is the top. This is where your fuses would go. Of course you have to remove all your fuses, all your relays to take this apart. So this is going to go on like so. And I would say be somewhat ginger with this. Because you start bending these over, they're going to be a pain in the hoo-ha to try to line up and get through these slots. Alright, I think. And then I'll 
show you how this came apart once I, I did a lot of, a lot of scratching and picking to get this thing apart. <laughs> it was not easy. It wasn't overly difficult either, but it was, I don't even know what it was at this point. I'm just flipping it around out here in outer space. Right, I'm going to set this down too. I just had one of these uh, male pins here that go on them J-case fuses. It was being a little, little difficult. Once you get it, then you just click it. And there's a latch there. A couple latches across the back here. A couple latches on the side. A couple latches in the front. And then back around again. Once the fuses are out, that piece actually, you know, slid off somewhat okay. Now let's make sure they're all latched. I just had to go around and, you know, wedge a screwdriver in here and then do this one, do that one, just kind of work my way in a circle. That's how I eventually got it. And that's what it looks like now. Hopefully, you took a picture. Because if you didn't, you're going to be there a while. Oh, and the other thing I saw in the bottom here, there was these green um, pin identifiers that sat in here. And I went ahead and pulled them out. And I believe... They only go in one way. I'd use a little pick to dig these out. These are not the top half of the female connector, just so you know. Because that's what I thought at first. I thought my connector on the van pulled apart, but that was, you know, not the case. And they've got a little latch that they slide past. I don't know if it was necessary to remove them, but I didn't know if there's any kind of screws or anything hindering this thing from coming apart when I initially started playing with it. That sh they should slide down now, should. I think once the connector goes in, these little jaws open up. Does that make sense to you? Hopefully. There we go, come on, slide down there. I just, I just wanna make sure it actually functions. It should. Come on, and there we go. So I think, I, I think they're just there to keep the Pins from getting all bent, maybe. When you disconnect it, kind of a safety. Must know I was working on it. So I'm gonna put the other one in, and then I'm gonna get out the Google, and we're gonna put all the fuses back in where they belong. I'm not gonna put you through that process because I've already put you guys through enough. According to the Google and the picture we took, it should be good. Should be being the key word. So now we got a sticker back in the van. That's where we had the power probe hooked up. There's where that conglomeration of wires is. Uh, nothing really much to see here. Red locks, standard, you know, Chrysler type connectors. So I'm going to work on getting these in. These back two were the first, the first two on uh, because they're, they're kind of the tightest ones to get at. Uh, you'll see when you're taking it apart. You can pull the box up quite a ways. Uh, let's see. I'll see if I can set the camera up. Power probe here. Uh, let's see. What direction did this thing go? That I don't recall. I believe like this. I think I'm right. And that, of course, they are, they're color-coded also. You know, blue, green, brown, some other color. What's an SMA video without the compressor kicking on, right? So you guys aren't going to be able to see much. This harness here is pretty snug. So we're going to get that one slid up on. Bring it down, lock it, put the red lock down. Probably my head's going to be in the way of most of it. Um, Probably. When you push these connectors in, you push them in and pull the latch kind of simultaneously and it will help draw it in, if that makes sense to you. Kind of have to do some of them by feel. There's that. So I'm going to move the camera and just kind of keep working on those, work my way from the back to the front. 
getting these up in there where they belong. Like I say, you can't really mess this up. In theory. There's the other green one. There's that. Push the lock down. Bada bing, bada boom. There's the big green one. But we've got some smaller ones here. Push them up in as you're swinging the latch, and it helps out a lot. Last connector here, the old gray one. There it is. They should all be plugged in now. And if they're not, well, we'll come back and revisit it. There's that. Got the battery cable. Technically, I was supposed to take a little Christmas tree fastener out of the side of the battery box, but we got her like that. And then by the minute, we're going to find out if she's going to go up and smoke. Now, I believe the wiper motor on this van is also bad in the sense that the park circuit is burned out of it or no longer functions. We're going to find out it shouldn't hinder the motor from working. See any smoke. Alright, we're just gonna set that on there gingerly in case we gotta rip it back off. Oh man, my sister is like four foot nine. Man, the car is filthy. My kids this girl have. Uh, oh gosh, clean your car one. Alright, we're in. How many miles are on this thing? 77. Okay, the key turns on. It's in the run position. Oh, turn this crap off. Wonder if it still runs. Hey, it still runs. No lights on. Moment of truth. Please, 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 please. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. All that, bro. Freaking wipers. What a circus. All that for a freaking relay. The good news is she doesn't have to spend the big bucks on the tip them. But why didn't they just put the wiper relay somewhere in there? Or a separate relay box? Why is it a printed circuit board? I don't know. Uh, I do want to plug into it. I got to fix my wires here. This is where I did my testing to find out what was wrong. So they got a couple little prickles and I got to put some liquid electrical tape and get that taped up. Uh, I also want to check and see if the park switch function is working in the wiper motor. I tested it before. You could see it. I think we were in the front control module looking at it. And no matter where I moved the wiper arms, it never went to the park position. But if I applied ground through a test light to the park sense wire, the scan tool showed it, so I'm just going to check that real quick. If it's not going to affect their ability to park, which I don't know, if it's not receiving a park signal, I don't know why they would park properly, but we'll check that real quick. So let's see, I am in the tip -um, and it says wiper switch in neutral position, but it says wiper park switch. It's true. False. True. Huh, so it is, it is working. Because with the wipers on, every time it goes to the bottom of the windshield, that should say true. So that's interesting. 
I don't know why when I was checking it out the other day. All right, so everything seems to function. It seems to see everything. All right, like I said, I don't know why they would they wouldn't park. Obviously, if if that was bad, I believe it even had a code in it. Um, it may not have codes in it now, but I think initially when I first was checking her wipers, it had a code in it for park switch, uh, something or other there. So let's let's go into tip them here and see if there is any any codes. Oops, I know this video sucks. I've been trying to. Pay a little more attention to what I'm doing instead of where the camera is. And let's grab codes. Yeah. Wiper park switch, input circuit high, circuit low. Let me clear these out. Just to see. We'll see if they come back. Let me just run the wipers here. Wiper blades are wasted on this thing. Happy it all works. Okay, let's reread them. Nothing. Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna pull codes out of all the other modules. Make sure I didn't goof up anything here. Make sure I didn't do something silly. But no codes in the tip them, and everything seems to function. All right, folks, that's it. That is probably the last tip them I'll fix. I don't know. I'll probably fix more. I won't do them for hire though for customers. I'll tell you that. So if you're watching this video and you have an inclination to call the shop and say, how much to fix my tip -um? No, sir. Yeah, <laughs> $600 exactly. Because I've got to be able to install a part that I can warranty my work is the thing. So, you know, if I'm doing this, you know, clearly it should be obvious to you at this point, I'm not an electronics repairer person. However, in this case it worked. I just want to take this apart so you guys can see it. Stupidest thing ever. I can diagnose them, but it's, when it comes to these little fiddly bits, this is not my job. I will always give it a try though. You know, in this case, not counting my magnifying glasses, we fixed the tip them for 15 bucks and got two extra relays. <laughs> I just want to see if I get the thing taken apart here. And what do we got? So you can see the little the little contacts in it. You know, that's where your clicky comes from. Okay, that side, no clicky clicky. And this side over here appears to be just fused. That's interesting. It freaking melted together. Can you guys see that? It's like fused together, those contact points. So that is why there was no, how hot did that son of a gun get? It's a freaking melt. Cause you got one side of the two sided relay there, clicky clicky on that side, over on this side, it is literally melted into a blob. That's curious. Yeah, the sucker got pretty hot at one point, hot enough to melt. I don't know. Whatever. I would assume if it's over current on the motor or short, it would have just blown the fuse. It's still a fuse protected circuit. So it's pretty interesting that that melted. Don't know, folks. We'll leave it at that. I don't know what else to say, really. I've got a couple extra le relays. I'll hang on to them in case you some other accessory on it goes bad. I wish I knew how to do this where I could actually demonstrate and show you guys better how to do it, how to use the little sucker thing that we've got. Because that seemed to actually be the kind of the bee's knees when it came to the getting the solder out. Probably using it wrong, so don't tear me apart in the comments. This stuff, probably using it wrong also. Probably should have put some flux on it. Maybe that would help it, you know, suck up the solder better. Maybe this stuff isn't even designed for what I was using it for in that style. Uh, application um, maybe this is only for like solder runs or something I don't know next time I'll do a little research before I try to make a video in either case I'm gonna get going I gotta call my sister ever come get her van and make me some cookies go down in the comments leave a bad one or a good one if you're inclined to do so and other comments and concerns down there also and just remember viewers if I can do it you can do it
Thanks for watching.